Hello and welcome. This is Angie with thecountrysheetcottage.net. So today we're going to start a series on using your iOS device with Cricut Design Space. Today we're going to talk about text. So let's take a look at how to use text on the iOS app of Cricut Design Space. So the first thing we're going to do is add some text. So we can pick the text and you can see a couple different options. You can see Cricut fonts, system fonts, and all fonts. So Cricut fonts are in Cricut Design Space. System fonts are ones on your iPad or iPhone. All fonts are all of those together. So for this demonstration, I'm going to pick a Cricut font and I'm going to add a testing word. Now, you can absolutely upload your own fonts right onto your iPad or iPhone and use those right in Cricut Design Space. And I actually have another video on how to do that and I will link that in the description below. So to add the text, you just type in the text box and then clicking return will take you to another line but we're just going to do one line for this, so I'll just backspace out of that, and then I will add the text. So now I have my text added. I can just click and drag it around my surface. I can click and drag the arrow to resize the text to any size that I would like. Now if I just click and drag the arrow, it resizes it like the, the height and width at the same time. But if I click that little lock and unlock it, I can actually drag it to any size I would like and change the height and width independently. You could also use the arrow here to rotate your text or the X to delete your text. So those four corners, each button does something. Now if we click actions, we can see a few more um, things that we could do with the text, including this advanced feature. So if we click the advanced feature, we actually have a few different options. For this, all, the only option that's highlighted is ungroup to letters because we only have one line of text. We could also ungroup to lines if we had different lines. But when we ungroup to letters, we can actually move each letter independently. So this is important on some fonts because the spacing might not, not be exactly correct and you may need to move each letter individually. This font's fine, so I'm just going to undo all that. And You can always just click the undo button to undo anything that you've actually done in Cricut Design Space. So next we are going to go to the edit functions. So we have our text and we can click edit and then we can see a few more options. So once we highlight the text, our options pop up and the first is the font itself. So we can actually change the font right here. So we can click the font itself and we can change to a different font. Now depending on the font that you pick, the, the fonts have different options. So that's under our style. And for this one, there's just a regular style, so there's no other options. So let's pick a different font so I can show you some of the different styles that might be available on your fonts or might not, depending on which font you choose. So we're just going to pick a, an American typewriter font. And now when we pick our styles, we can actually see quite a few like bold, condensed bold, light, that type of thing. So we can actually pick like a bold and see what difference that makes. You can also align your text. So if you have multiple lines, you could center those left align, right align, that type of thing. You can also resize your text here. So you could pick a specific font size, like a 75, or you can actually use the plus and minus buttons to resize your font just incrementally to kind of see what it looks like at different font sizes. You can also increase and decrease your letter spacing or type in a number if you know what number you want. So that comes in handy if um, you have like a cursive font and you want the letters closer together to make it look more like cursive handwriting. You can also um, increase and decrease your line spacing if I have more than one line. So let's add a, actually another line to this to demonstrate line spacing. So I'm just gonna put like a second word here and you can see that these are centered together. So um, when I type the, let's just type like test, um, when I type that, those two are centered under one another and that comes from that alignment feature I talked about. So we're gonna highlight our text again and click that edit. And we're gonna click our line spacing and actually let's move this over so we can kind of see it a little bit better. So again, I'm gonna click on the text and just kind of drag it over to the side. And then again, click that line spacing and I can actually increase or decrease it just with these buttons or I could type in a number just like we talked about before if we have a certain number that we know we want for the spacing between the lines we can just type that in and get a specific 
distance between those. Um, so I could like type in a 1.0, 1.2, and then that spacing would be at 1.2. So now let's talk about our types of text. So right now our line type is to cut, but we could also draw. So the Cricut will also take pins. So when you click your draw line type, it actually asks you what pen you want to use. So this is important, especially if you're going to use like multiple pens in one project, that type of thing, and you'll need to change them. So pick the pen that you're going to use, and then you can see a difference right in Cricut Design Space. So this font is actually going to kind of outline the font, and I'm just going to change that back to cut for the rest of our um, demonstration. But some fonts are actually just like a writable font, and just one line will be there. So then one, and one other thing you can do in line type is I can change the color. So I'm still at cut, but I changed it to blue. So what does that do? So that I can change different pieces of my text to different colors, and then it would prompt me in Cricut Design Space to change the mat when I go to that. So then let's move on to width. So you can actually change the width right here instead of using those arrows, especially if you wanted like a certain width. Same with the height, I can change the height. But you'll notice when I change these, the width and the height, they're changing at the same time. Again, there's that lock button. So if I click the unlock, now I can change the width and the height won't change. And I can change the height and the width won't change. So that lock button is important if you wanna lock your ratios or unlock them depending on how you're doing your design. I can also rotate here, especially if you want like a certain angle. If I wanted to flip it to 90 degrees, this is where I would do that. You can also flip the entire thing. So if you want to mirror your text, you can do it here. But you can also do it like if you're doing heat transfer vinyl, you can actually do it when you click make it. But I can absolutely flip it horizontally here or vertically. And then the next is your positions. So if you want to change the position on the mat to a certain position, then you can use these buttons or type in the position you would like. So horizontal and vertical position. Um, so now let's look at um, maybe syncing our layer. Well, let's add actually another layer perhaps, and then we can talk about some of these other options with the layer window. So let's add um, just another word, and that'll add a second layer. So you'll notice when I add this second layer, it'll actually be in a different color. That's because these two are going to cut out of two different materials right now. So I'm going to have a blue mat and a black mat, and it's going to ask me to change those. So now that I have two layers, I can actually pick both those at the same time. I can go to that edit, and now an align function shows up. So you can align center, you can align left, you can align right. So let's just center those up together, and it'll align both of those, center the text up. So that's one way to align your designs. Now let's talk about if we wanted both of these from the same color. We could actually click sync and we could drag that black. So just kind of pick it and drag it into the blue. So this will make both of our layers or both of our objects blue. And so now they'll be on the same mat. So that's one way to get them the same color and on the same mat. And you can always click your layers panel and you can look at the layers themselves. So I can see that I have two layers and they're both cut layers. So I can kind of get information about the layers on this panel. And then next up, let's talk about some of the actions we can do. So um, we can actually do these layers together. So we can kind of pick, let's, let's do, um, let's talk about grouping things. So let's pick both layers. So to do that, I just kind of click and I drag and make sure that my box goes around both of my pieces. And then I can group those together. So what does group do? Group allows me to move the objects together around the mat. It also allows me to resize the objects together. So when I resize them, they both resize at the same time. It doesn't, however, affect how they cut. So if I wanted to affect how they cut, I would need to attach those two together. So I would need to pick my group or pick two objects and click attach. And then I can click make it and kind of show you what happens. So when those two are attached together and you click make it, and I'm using my joy here, so it's gonna ask me which mat. Um, it's gonna put them on the same mat 
and they're going to be located just like they are in Cricut Design Space, right? So we centered them up, they're together. Now if I detach those, so I'm going to click Detach, and I'm going to click Make It, and I'm going to show you what happens. And you'll see that they're not going to be in the same location as they are right here. When I click Make It, that second test is actually going to move. That's because they're not attached together, so it doesn't recognize that the second test was located centered between the two. So if you want the things located together, you need to attach them together. So now let's pick them both and let's talk about um, duplicating. So you can actually hit the duplicate button and you can make more than one. Then you can click that X and delete it off if you don't want it. So now let's pick just one of these and talk about welding. So if I pick one of these and click weld, I actually won't be able to change anything anymore. I won't be able to change the text itself. I won't be able to change the, um, the font or anything like that. But welding is super useful if you're using a cursive font to weld it all together to make it look like more like a cursive word. So now let's pick that piece and let's look at print and cut function. So for print and cut function, if I click fill, instead of no fill, I can actually click print. What this does is now these letters will print. So if I was printing on white paper, it would print blue letters and then the Cricut would cut each letter individually. So this might be what you want, but you might be looking for something like a label, right? Where the label, um, the testing test would print on a square box and the square box would cut out like I would apply a label to something. So what you would need to do with that is you need something for the words to print on in order to cut. So we're just gonna add a square to do that on. And we're just gonna resize that to approximately the label size we want. Now, if we click make it here, you, or actually let's just click the layers. So you, we'll click the layers and we can kind of see what our layers look like at this point. And you can see that the layers themselves are actually um, print and cut just on the testing test. So the square is a cut, the testing test is a cut then print, and then the other test is a cut. That's not what we want, right? So we don't want cut beside the um, text itself. So how do we do that? So first we're going to pick the rectangle itself and we're going to arrange it. So we're going to click arrange and we're going to send that to the back. So now it looks a little bit something like a label. And then we'll pick both those two together and we're going to attach them. Remember that attach function under actions and it allows us to attach that lettering to the box so that it knows to, that we want a label. So now when we click make it, it actually looks like a label. So with the box, It'll print the testing test and then it'll cut around our rectangle. Now my colors are off and the words aren't exactly a label, but you get the idea of how to do print and cut with fonts on your iOS device. So you could also use your own fonts right on your iPad or iPhone, right in Cricut Design Space. And I actually have another video on how to do that. You'll need another app on your device to actually install those. So I'll drop a link for that video in the description below. Otherwise, I hope this helped you using text on your iOS device. If you have any questions about anything we've covered today, please drop those in the comment section below. You can also give us a thumbs up if you love this video and it helped you at all. You might also want to head on over to our YouTube channel, hit that subscribe button. Like I said, I hope to do more videos all about the iOS version of Design Space and you don't want to miss any of those. So thank you all so much for joining me today and I'll see you next week. Bye-bye.